the topic for this uh, video is uh, BPH, also known as benign prostate hyperplasia. Uh, benign essentially meaning that it's not cancerous. Prostate is the organ that it affects. And hyperplasia is just a term that means an increase in the number of cells. And uh, let's get started. And we'll refer to this as BPH uh, throughout the video uh, for obvious reasons. So um, I think a picture is probably the best way to um, start off talking about this. So as you can see, uh, let's look at this uh, part of the diagram. There's a prostate here uh, that is pointing to. And if you can, I don't want to uh, draw too much here, but if you notice, this is the bladder. And the bladder, this is the bladder. And the urine normally sits inside the bladder. And eventually the urine exits the bladder through uh, this canal known as the urethra and the canal eventually empties out um, through the uh, um, exiting point um, of the male penis now the canal when the prostate is normal is nice and patent as you can see but let's look turn our attention to what happens when you have a uh, enlarged prostate. Well, the diagram is a very nice uh, description uh, illustratively uh, of what happens. As you can see, that canal known as the urethra is significantly narrowed, and that's what causes the symptomatology. Um, and those symptoms include essentially uh, the symptoms of bladder obstruction. Um, if you without instead of memorizing what the symptoms are think about what's happening the bladder essentially just can't empty the urine like it used to it can empty it a little bit because there is a little bit of patency in that urethra but not as patent as uh, when the prostate is normal so with that in mind what are the symptoms well the symptoms are uh, the way you want to think about it is that the prostate is uh, squeezing that urethra and as a result the bladder is not able to empty the urine so those symptoms will include um, uh, incomplete incomplete emptying of the bladder that makes perfect sense and as a result you're going to go to the bathroom a lot frequency you go you empty a little bit then you go back empty a little bit things like that that's what frequency urgency meaning all of a sudden you have this tremendous urge to go because you simply didn't uh, empty your bladder. There's a long list of symptoms, but I want you to understand them rather than memorize them. Um, you can also go to the bathroom at night a lot, which is known as nocturia. Um, after you go, because your bladder hasn't emptied, uh, you can have dribbling um, also. Now, these are very... Um, uh, how you say uh, troublesome um, sometimes embarrassing symptoms that men can have so that's why BPH is so important it's also extremely common uh, there's a saying that 90 percent of 90 year olds have BPH so that's that's just because the prostate grows in all men as the man increases in age um, normally BPH happens in when the person is in the 50s and 60s or, or beyond but um, it can happen in, in, in a large number of uh, men uh, over a span of several decades okay so somebody uh, has come to your office and they've uh, basically told you that they've had these symptoms uh, how would you go about diagnosing it well the diagnosis involves a couple of physical exam um, 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 points and a couple of lab uh, uh, tests. So the the physical exam involves the digital rectal exam. Um, digital uh, re refers to your digit, your finger, and um, also known as DRE. And that's basically a prostate exam where you insert your finger and you feel the prostate. And if the prostate is indeed uh, significantly enlarged, you can feel that. Uh, you can feel the prostate to be uh, um, enlarged or or even hard or um, irregular in nature. The other thing you can do is you can palpate the bladder 
and if the bladder is significantly obstructed in its uh, uh, outflow, then the bladder could be distended. Labs, well, the big, big test, PSA, everybody's heard of this, prostate-specific antigen, and that tells you um, uh, about prostatic hyperplasia. And the normal value is uh, less than 4, and uh, uh, the units for this is... Uh, um, nanograms per milliliter just to make sure uh, greater than 10 is considered abnormal and if it's between 4 and 10 that's sort of known as the gray zone and what that means is that it's not uh, technically abnormal but it's not normal so it probably needs further investigation um, one more uh, exam uh, lab test that's commonly done is a urine analysis that's the exclude any urinary tract infection and then finally a bladder ultrasound uh, that that tells us uh, how much urine is still in the bladder after the person uh, goes to the bathroom and it can be a very good test to to, um, um, to figure out the the extent of bladder outlet obstruction and then um, what um, you do to actually figure out if there is any kind of malignancy in the prostate is a prostate biopsy and prostate biopsies are done uh, in a urologist's office urology urology will do prostate biopsies so. all right so how do you treat uh, BPH uh, what's the what's the um, guidelines well there's medications and then there's surgery meds and surgery. Now the surgery uh, essentially is a uh, evolving resection of that uh, enlarged prostate and the, the term is TERP um, and TERP stands for uh, trans urethral trans urethral resection of the prostate So transurethra meaning you go in through the urethra here and then you resect, resect out the enlarged portion of the prostate and um, that uh, is a surgical uh, procedure done. Um, now the medications, there's two big ones and I want to talk about both of them. Uh, alpha 1 adrenergic blockers and the next one um, is a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. And I'm going to explain what each of these uh, does. Alright, the first one, the alpha-1 adrenergic blockers, um, those uh, all uh, usually end in uh, osin, zosin or osin. So, for example, uh, terazosin is a very common one. Now, how do these work? Well, what's 5-alpha-1 adrenergic? Uh, these are receptors, alpha-1 adrenergic. Uh, these are receptors. That's what you're blocking with these medications. And these receptors are on the smooth muscle and uh, the uh, smooth muscle of the bladder and prostate and also in the arterioles. So when you block these uh, smooth, uh, these receptors, what you get is a relaxation when you block relaxation of that smooth muscle and what that uh, results in is dilation. Dilation. So what that means is that that lumen starts to open up so for example this lumen here this lumen uh, starts to open up and that relieves uh, the symptoms of BPH now interestingly because uh, it uh, uh, allows the relaxation of the smooth muscle in the bladder neck and prostate it's used for BPH uh, because it opens up that lumen uh, makes it wider so that urine can flow through but also, if you notice, these, these receptors are also on the arterioles. So it also widens the ar arteries 
And as a result, you get a vasodilation, vasodilation of the uh, arterioles, which results in reducing blood pressure. So these medications, if you look them up, they have two uh, reasons why a person will be taking them. The first reason is BPH, and the second reason is hypertension, interestingly, because it causes uh, vasodilation of the smooth muscle of the arterioles as well. Now let's uh, look at the second class of medication, which is known as 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. Well, there's a chemical pathway in the body uh, which converts testosterone to DHT. DHT is, uh, is a uh, uh, substance that is involved in promoting prostate growth. Uh, so that's this, this is the bad guy, uh, I guess. This is what's causing this to happen. Prostate growth promotes prostate growth. And the enzyme that causes this conversion is 5-alpha reductase. So when you have a medication that is known as a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, it blocks this enzyme. And one of those uh, is finasteride, for example. That's the name of a medication that's uh, a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. So when finasteride blocks 5-alpha reductase, which is an enzyme, it, it, it reduces the produ uh, conversion of testosterone to DHT. And if you have less of DHT, you have less uh, prostate growth. So that's the other way that it's... Uh, um, that's the other medication that's used to treat BPH. And then finally, I just have a quick uh, clinical vignette, nothing too complicated. 55-year-old man presents for a routine physical. His blood pressure is 161 over 98, so it's a bit high. Patient's only complaint is that over the past several months, he has had difficulty urinating. His urine stream is intermittent, and he has recently begun experiencing nocturia, urinating at night, and profound urinary urgency. Digital rectal exam ref reveals diffuse enlargement of the prostate. Which of the following agents? would be most likely to effectively treat the man's urinary tract symptoms as well as his hypertension. Well, we talked a little bit about those medications that are known as alpha-1 adre adrenergic blockers and that if you were to block those alpha-1 adrenergic receptors it causes uh, relaxation of the smooth muscle in the bladder, neck, and prostate. And that's why those medications, which end in Zosin, are used to treat BPH. But also, those alpha-1 adrenergic receptors are also found on arterioles. So when those uh, receptors are blocked, they cause vasodilation of the arteries, which results in lower blood pressure. And that's why those medications are used to treat BPH and hypertension. And of these five choices, it would be choice E.